Hi everyone, Paul Morbid here, Morbid Team Entertainment and Bullock's Repair Full Opinions. Going to show you how to dismantle and lubricate this frames per second dial on a Fujika Z800. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started on that. Okay, next I'm going to have to remove this covering right here. And sometimes it, when the glue that has behind it is going to pop off, sometimes it won't. And I'll have to add heat with a hair dryer. As if those of you who have uh, seen on my channel and familiar with it before, just apply heat with a hair dryer right on, right on to it directly. Just like so. Okay. But sometimes it will pop off, sometimes it will not right there. Take caution because under there there are screws, but and more importantly, uh, usually there are stuff like uh, ball bearings. And this comes into the different settings. Hear that click? Okay. So that's what you got to look out for. So for this, where did my other tool go? There you are. Buried under something just like anyone else's workbench. All right, so what I got to do here on this knob, I'm going to set it to a certain speed. Okay, here's my, get in the frame pole, there's my white dot at the end of my pencil eraser. And I'm going to send, send you to, set you to SM, okay? Just like that. Now, I'm going to take my sewing needle. For those of you who don't know, I'm going to stick it right in the corner of here. And I'm going to start lifting and working my ray all the way around here. If you see this is going to bend this at any point, this is after you've used the uh, hair dryer. You can switch to something else, flat, like a guitar pick. And you take this guitar pick and you slide it right up under there just like that. Alright? That's what you do. And you keep wedging and wedging and wedging all the way around. Get back in there. And you move that all the way around there until finally it's just going to pop off. That is the goal right there. All right. So just keep working it. All the way around there is what you do deeper and deeper. And then finally it's going to pop off. Okay. I'll turn it over. You can see the glue that was right there. Put that off to the side. Now I'll point these out right here one at the end of my pencil eraser two ball bearings okay so this is what we got to get into and check out there all right so you're saying to yourself paul why why can't i see any screws here and here well that's why these things rotate rotate here rotate again Okay, and now you will start to see screws right in here, okay, and here. And you just fixate those screws right there, and you will see how both of these Phillips have lined up, okay? You want to turn this upside down and uh, watch out how these things out, these ball bearings that I was talking about, they will spill out. And once you have lost them, they are gone. And then you have serious problems. So what you want to do is you want to hold your thumb over it. And you want to get these out the best way that you can. Okay? That's all you can really hope for. And you just unscrew these like so. So I'm holding this with my thumb really tight, not tight enough to break 
the dial, mind you. All right, because those ball bearings are sitting in a certain spot inside the dial, each one of them is. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to give you the best view that I can. Put some springs in there, pulling it right out. Try not to drop this stuff. Okay, there you go. Now I've got two springs here. One and two at the end of my pencil eraser. And you can see the workings here. You've got another screw in the center. Under this, when you remove this part, will be your ball bearings. Okay? So do take note. And again, you don't want to lose those two springs in there. Okay? Here is the inner working of the dial. You see that notch? That little hole right there is where this part goes. Okay? Okay, so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two springs here and I'm going to remove them and they just simply lift straight out just like that. Okay? That's all that is. All right, so that's done. You are going to want some uh, any type of thread locker, okay, for later, and because you're going to want to put it, reapply some on here on this screw. All right. So we'll take and we're going to undo this Phillips. Before you do, remember, you have these two ball bearings here at the end of my pencil eraser. All right. So you want to keep an eye on that. Okay. <coughs> so I'm going to keep it turned up like this. Everything facing up like so. All right. I'll go ahead and remove this Phillips screw. Put my fingers on top of it. So when you get these vintage movie cameras in, you gotta go in there and you gotta clean everything. Okay, so this screw here has got a washer to it. You have to go under there and clean under that. It's just wise to do it. Check for any type of corrosion because any type of corrosion and rust is going to spread throughout the camera. All right. Okay, next. Pull that straight up. Flip it over. Check for rust and corrosion under here. All right. So you can see it's going to need to be cleaned. All right, but it's not that bad, and that's good news. I'm going to put my screw right on top of there because that tells you pretty much where everything is, and it's just it really, really helps out. All right, so here I'll go around here. It looks like I'm going to need my sewing needle again all right right up in that corner You see what I'm doing, right? Hold your fingers on top of this. Remember, you can use the sewing needle method if you want, 
with a guitar pick once you get the sewing needle going and go up under here and work your way around all right okay so I'm in at that point lift this up turn it over and that's what I've got Okay, ball bearings are here, at the end of my pencil eraser, and here, that's it, and you just got to go in there and clean, we're just going to take some rubbing alcohol, go in there and clean it, and then we're going to lubricate it. And for those of you who do not frequent my channel, I'll show you what to lubricate it with, you just can't use any type of lubrication it's something special okay remember everybody and for those of you who do not know and free, do not frequent my channel here's the alcohol to use when cleaning at least 99 percent to use at least 87 percent that's fine but nothing lower because it just is going to be water it will not suit the job Some of this on here and get it going. Okay. So you should be able to go through this fairly easily as you can see. Just get it right in the side of here. Do get around the sides. Remember, always, these cameras have only been opened up since they've been in manufacturing back in the day. So do, if you can, go through them with a fine tooth comb. But I do suggest you sending it to a service technician who knows exactly what they're doing. It really, really is best. Flip it over this way. Okay, so some of the extra smaller holes that are in there, you can use a pipe cleaner with the rubbing alcohol. And just get some on there. These pipe cleaners are just really something. They do wonders in camera repair. They really do. As you can see. Let's run this straight through here. Get that alcohol on there. There you go. Run it on out the other side and you're good. Okay. Next little hole down here. Just run it straight through again on the second hole. Okay. Alcohol again. Opposite side. Q tip has two sides to it, usually. And we're going to go clean the obvious. Any 
type of opening. Sides of the walls in there. All right. It's up to you if you want to clean this off, the glue. But I'm sure I will. These uh, small holes right here that you see, that is for the pipe cleaner. Run that through there. Just like that. That's good enough. Good enough. All right, that's good enough there. The alcohol on it. That will do. And then the third one on this side, rather. All right. As far as the glue is concerned, right here, you can use different methods to clean it off. Uh, my concern is is on pressing down on it. You really don't want to press down on it too much and cracking the piece. And again, uh, I would always suggest taking these pieces like this before you reassemble it. If you have a 3D printer, um, need a high quality one, such as Bamboo Labs, you know, something like that. Um, and you know print these pieces out that way you won't have to keep looking for new parts um, as far as uh, the 3d printing getting all these in-depth areas in here I'm not so sure if that works as of yet okay these parts will be fine the gears if you're gonna print gears that really will not work in my experience because the pressure is too much for the part. It's just not going to work on the gears. Okay? So what you can do here is, you know, you can check and see if this is going to scrape off. If it will not, you can try to use some type of glue remover. If you see it's going to cause too much of a problem, don't mess with it. Don't try to break the part. Just leave it alone. And then later, glue this back on. Any type of contact cement, you know, will do the will do the trick. All right. Everyone's got their own what they want to use. Uh, for the, again, this is the one I use. I use it for use it for a lot of things, and uh, you know, I I really really enjoy this stuff. Okay. Next, this is what you have to lubricate the plastic parts with, is white lithium grease number two. Uh, you can't use anything else, uh, because if you do use another type of lubrication, it will, it will uh, soften the gears uh, on your cameras. It will soften the plastic parts and make them break, is what will happen. Okay, so as you can see here, formulated with high quality special type mineral oils thickened with lithium 12 hydroxy we'll move on here designed for use in rolling and sliding parts of precision machine tool textile machinery universal grinder plastic gear and moving parts and toys so this is what you need otherwise your gears are going to get and plastic parts are going to get softened over the years and they're just going to turn to mush and break so there you go white lithium grease number two all right so let me get this open and remember as always 
if you're going to work on your own cameras, whatever mistakes you make to your camera and or your person are all on you and any attempts to service or repair your cameras or a camera. It's best to send it to a service technician. Now, here is the white lithium grease number two on the table at the end of my pencil eraser and I have my white cotton gloves. It's your choice to wear latex or white cotton gloves. This stuff is dangerous to the lungs and harmful to the skin. It gets inside the pores of your skin. You can get inside your blood. All right. You don't want it around your... If you can wear a mask, it's great. You also want to keep it away from your house pets. So I'm going to go for another Q-tip. Keep moving on here. All right. Get this back in the frame here. Get some of this on here. Just get some lubricated. You really don't have to put too terribly much, just enough to do the job. There's going to be some moving around in here and grinding and stuff, of course. And remember, these parts are old, and that's why I highly suggest you get them 3D printed upon that being possible. I don't know very much about 3D printing still. I'm still learning about that. But it's my understanding that Bamboo Labs is, uh, is or pretty much is the best machine to get. Okay, there you go. And here we go to the underside of it. You notice the underside, and you see this little tab right here at the end of my pencil eraser, okay? Get yourself some more, even though there's some more on the there's some on the bottom piece, and just go around. All right. Again, not too terribly much, just enough to do the job. All right. Now when you go to put this stuff back on, this one right here, it's only going to go on one way, and I'll explain to you why. So you don't have to worry. This tab right here at the end of my pencil eraser, you see that thing? And then you have this part, this back part at the end of my pencil eraser on the back, so you can see it's only going to go on one way and that tab needs to go down on this end right here so you don't have to force it when you put it on just put it down in there and when it seats down you'll know when it happens so good thing is just relax and you heard it and you saw it right and then all you can do is just take it turn it it's going to turn one way it's going to turn the other a certain amount. Okay, so let me see if I can. Hey, let me see if I can take a uh, tool here to show you a bit better. Okay. Light on the subject, so it's going to turn here a certain amount and here a certain amount. Okay. And then it's going to stop to the left and to the right. Okay. Next. Next. Alcohol again on a microfiber cloth. Right here. Like 
again, rust corrosion can start from anywhere at any time and transfer itself. So you want to get this stuff off. And you want to keep it off. One good thing about performing a CLA on the, even the parts of a junk camera is you can have these parts ready for when you need them yourself. Okay? So if I ever something happened and I this potentially this part broke, then I would have this ready and CLA'd and everything and ready to go. Alright? And that's the good thing, so there's a bit of dirt right there. And I'm just going to go ahead and take this part. Stick it on there. Now this only goes on one way. Uh, this part again. So as you can see how it's fitted. This is molded here. Okay. Same thing here. Just like that. And it just fits on there one way. Okay, and there you go. There's under it. Right there, okay. And that's how it's going to fit. Just like so. It will be smooth on top, flat on top here. At the end of my pencil eraser, where that screw is going to go. Okay. So as we still have rubbing alcohol on the microfiber cloth, remove this washer from this screw. Give it a little bit of a rub down. Okay. That's that. Including the screw. Give it a rub down. And remove that old Loctite off of there. As you can see it here at the end of my pencil eraser. Take that old stuff off of there. Get this off the best way you can. Alright. Good enough. Come on, you being stubborn. This stuff always is. It turns into like a goo. But that being so, you can see how well it works. You know, it gets your screw set right into there, not to move. All right, got it on there, good, off of there, good enough. Washer, screws through there. This is a Phillips. Screw this down, but don't get it too tight so you won't crack the piece. Alright, that's it. Okay, so again what I'm going to do is I'm going to pack this piece away. So in case that I have a problem, a camera that I have gets cracked, the piece it is, this one's CLA and it's ready to go. 
and all I can do is just install it onto the camera. All right, that's all that I have to do. Okay. So I've got everything there that I need. Put my screws on there. All right. And remember to put some type of thread locker on that part right there on that uh, screw where we left off right there okay but I've, already, I've got mine bagged I can do that anytime I want to so I'm caught up all right so that's how to get your Fujika Z800 frames per second dial removed and lubricated properly all right it's just like that do contact me at the social media outlets provided on the screen and remember as always do subscribe until next time later